In October 2000, police in Salt Lake City, Utah were called to investigate a body, half buried on the shore of the Great Salt Lake, near an abandoned resort called Saltaire. We had received a call that uh, some duck hunters had found some human remains. The body was badly decomposed, and all that remained were a skull, some bones, and several long strands of hair. The detectives knew that it was a woman, but they had no idea who she was or where she came from. We didn't have a name for her, so we named her Saltair Sally because of the proximity to uh, the Saltair Resort. The detectives combed through hundreds of missing persons reports from across the country to find Saltair Sally's true identity. But no one matched her DNA. For eight years, the case sat cold. Then, in 2008, they heard about a new forensic technique developed at a local chemistry lab. My name is Leslie Chesson. I am the president of ISO Forensics Incorporated. We have envelopes full of hair samples that we've collected from salons all around the United States. Leslie Chesson and her team at ISO Forensics have been analyzing hair samples to trace where people lived. They use a technique called stable isotope analysis. Every molecule in your body is made up of atoms of different elements like carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But not every atom of an element is identical. For example, oxygen-16, the most common form of oxygen, has eight protons and eight neutrons. But sometimes an oxygen atom has 10 neutrons. This is an isotope called oxygen-18, or more commonly, heavy oxygen, because it has a higher mass. Isotopes are atoms of the same element that have different numbers of neutrons. Using a machine called an isotope ratio mass spectrometer, isoforensics measured the heavier isotopes in hair samples from around the country. They plotted the ratio of heavy isotopes to light isotopes on maps called isoscapes. They discovered that the ratio of stable isotopes of oxygen and hydrogen atoms in a person's hair was related to the ratio of stable isotopes in his or her local drinking water. But what can this relationship tell us? It turns out your hair can tell researchers a lot about where you've traveled. To grow the molecules that make up your hair, your body uses oxygen and hydrogen atoms from the water that you drink. So the ratio of stable isotopes in your drinking water is reflected in the isotope levels in your hair. If you travel or move, the isotope ratios in your hair change to reflect the isotope ratios in the local drinking water in your new location. The team set out to recreate a timeline of the final years of Saltair Sally's life. They cut strands of her hair into weekly increments and analyzed their isotope ratios. We can look at what was the person doing week by week. Was the isotope ratio from segment to segment of hair changing? If it was, then they were potentially moving and changing their drinking water. They discovered that Saltair Sally had traveled, especially around the Pacific Northwest of the United States. The investigation took on a new focus. This time, the detectives found a missing persons report for a young woman from Seattle named Nicole Bacolis. Bacolis was listed as a missing person in that same location. Detectives then took DNA samples from her mother and they matched. The cause of Nicole's death remains a mystery, but detectives are grateful that science could help them solve a big piece of the puzzle. Stable isotope analysis was able to give us a geographic area instead of looking all across the country or all across the world. After searching for eight long years, they never imagined that the biggest clue could be found in the smallest strand of hair. Mm -hmm.